welcome to worship. Thank you so much for joining us for worship this day. We are so glad that we are able to be together virtually when we cannot be together physically. I ask that you make sure that you find the place online where you can register your attendance with us because we would love to know that you are worshiping with us today. Let us pray as we begin worship. Loving and gracious God, We thank you for the ability to come together to worship you even when we are physically apart. We pray now that your Holy Spirit will inspire us and enliven us and encourage us to do your work in the world. We pray now that you will remove any distractions that might be in our way from hearing your word for us this day. We anticipate your presence and we look forward to all that you have in store for us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please join us for our opening hymn this morning, Christ is Alive. statement of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
as we move into our time of prayer together, I want to remind you that you are able to share your prayer concerns with us. When you register your attendance for worship today, there is a link that will take you to the church website where you can insert your prayer concerns because we want to make sure that we are continuing to pray for one another. The Holy Spirit can hold us together even as we are apart while we pray together. Please join me in prayer. Loving God, we thank you for Easter. And we thank you for the power of the resurrection and what it means for us. We thank you that Easter is something that we get to celebrate not just one day a year, but every day. We know that Easter reminds us that light and love and life have the final word. We know that death does not hold the final power over us, but that your life and your love do. Help us even in the midst of these strange times to be resurrection people and to share your light and your love and this world because there are so many who do not yet know how much you love them. God, we pray today for our world. We pray for all anywhere who are hurting. We know that this virus has united us in a very strange way as a global society. God, we pray for all who are dealing with illness and especially those in places that have great violence and injustice and persecution. God, the needs of our world, even the needs of our own community seem too great for us to comprehend, but we know that we can entrust them to you. We know that you are big enough to see and respond to all of the needs of the whole world. And so we entrust the world to you. And we know that you are seeking even now to redeem and restore creation and all of your children. God, we pray for our nation. We pray for all who are in leadership. We pray that in the midst of these times, we will find solidarity with other people. That maybe in this time we will allow ourselves to see our common humanity. That we will remember the things that truly matter and maybe be able to set aside some of the smaller things that are not as important. God, we pray for our state. We pray for all those in leadership. We pray for our first responders and our health care workers. And we also pray for all those who work in grocery stores and in restaurant kitchens and all of those who still have to go out into the world each day so that we can have our essential needs met. We thank you for them and I pray that even after all of this is behind us, we will continue to appreciate all that they do for us. God, we pray for our own church community. There are many needs that we have among us, and so we pray for your healing and wholeness and wellness to come. We pray for all who are sick this day. We pray for all who have emotional needs or financial needs because of this virus. God, we pray for your healing and wholeness and wellness, but also your guidance and your provision for all this day. Lord, we know that you see and respond to the needs of the whole world, but that you are close enough to us to respond to our own needs. And so, God, we entrust all of these things to you. And we lay them at the foot of your throne. And we pray the prayer together that Jesus taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to thank you for your continued faithfulness and generosity to the church and especially the outpouring for our Helping Hands Fund over the past few weeks to help those in our community who find themselves in desperate need. Let us pray as we ask God to bless the gifts that we give. God, we thank you for the blessings of this life, and we give back a portion of what you have so graciously entrusted to us. 
We pray that you will take the gifts that we give and that you will use them to build up your kingdom so that more people may come to know your love and your light. And God, we pray that as we give, you will allow us to grow in our faith, that we may be strengthened, and that we may trust you above anything this world may offer to us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading for this morning comes to us from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 24 through 29. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. 
Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good, good morning. We could join our hearts in prayer, please. Dear God, we ask that your Holy Spirit, your living presence with us, open our ears and our hearts to the word you would have us here this morning. In Christ's name, amen. We are in the uh, second Sunday of Easter, the Easter season, and particularly this time of year, we talk about post-resurrection appearances in, in the scriptures, and today is, is, is one of those. Post-resurrection appearances are a part of the gospel message. You're very familiar with John 3.16, for God so loved the world. We just got through talking about Christ's sacrifice on the cross and his love and forgiveness and, and salvation. We all say this is the gospel message. But there's another one that you may be familiar with, and that is the grace of Christ's post-resurrection appearances. I feel like uh, this phenomenon, this gift, this grace, is one of the most important things in Christianity. Where would the Christian church be without the witnesses of Mary and the other women at the empty tomb? Or the disciples whose message of he has risen was shared all over the world in the book of Acts? Or Paul? who was persecuting Christians, and then on the road to Damascus, he met the risen Christ, was blinded by a light, and then became one of its leading theologians. Or John Wesley, the, <clears throat> the founder of the Methodist Church. We've talked about many times his Aldergate experience. He was a very devout, committed Christian, but he just says, you know, I felt like I was doing it out of obligation. He called it the faith of a servant. But after he experienced the Holy Spirit at Alder's Gate, he said, now I have the faith of a friend. Charlie introduced this concept last week. When we talk about the power of the resurrected Christ. Resurrection Power. Today we talk about Thomas. Thomas was one of the 12 disciples. He was not with the other disciples on Easter Sunday. I don't know why. It'd be a good question to explore. But they told him Christ is risen. And Thomas says, listen, I don't believe until I see the wounds in his side and put my fingers in the nail holes. I'm not going to believe. Innocent guy, Thomas. So a week later, they're behind closed doors when Christ appears. Now, Thomas gets to see Christ come through a closed door, gets to hear his voice, and Christ says, touch the wounds in my side and in my hands. Touch them. <clears throat> and when Thomas does, he says, I believe. Yeah, who wouldn't? I think if you gave any one of us one of those things, seeing or touching or hearing, we're in. So when Thomas has this experience of the risen Christ, he says, I believe. And Christ says to him, you believe because you have seen, but blessed are those who have not seen and yet they believe. Now, the word blessed translates privileged recipient of divine favor. Privileged recipient of divine favor. So the question I have is, how are those of us who have not seen or touched or like Thomas, how are we privileged? That doesn't make any sense. I'd much rather have seen or touched or heard than be privileged, blessed. 
Well, it goes like this. And I got to say this um, to keep my wife happy at home. Faith that is <coughs> proof is, is not faith. Uh, Hebrews 11.1 1 says this. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Paul also defines faith as hope against hope. He says, you know, when Abraham and Sarah were promised to have a child well into their retirement years, they didn't immediately feel morning sickness. It was years before Sarah had a baby. And Paul says, but they hoped against hope as a definition of faith. So faith that is seen, touched, Christ is saying it is better not to have and just to accept it, to trust in it. So that's, as a Methodist minister, what I have to tell you. But I got to tell you this, there is another grace that I want to mention, particularly this morning. That is the grace of resurrection power the presence of the living Christ. You know, when Christ, the night before he died, he told his disciples, you'll see this in John 14 through 16, he says, look, I'm going away, but when I do, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. And now you can read this for yourself, but he says the Holy Spirit will teach and coach and discipline and comfort and love and remind you of what I've said. It is this presence of the Holy Spirit that John Wesley believed made all the difference in the world. We enter a time, we are in a time where we have got to learn how to worship without a beautiful sanctuary and choirs and music and liturgy. We have got to disciple without classrooms and teachers. We have got to continue our serving the community online, I guess. <laughs> and we have got to find a way to maintain the Christian community under the, the no closer than six foot rule. I don't know how we're going to do that one. I miss flesh. I don't like, as you can tell, preaching to a, a video camera. I miss flesh and blood. I miss reading people's body language. I miss watching people check their watches. So I don't know how we're going to do this one. But let me suggest this. Resurrection power. The presence of the living Christ. For worship, I saw a cute cartoon last week on Facebook. Shows God and the devil. And the devil said, well, I found a way to shut down the churches. And God says, well, I have found a way to get church in people's homes. The Christian church started in people's homes, in upper rooms, in groups of 10 and 12. They gathered, they shared, they gave witness to how they had experienced Christ. That's, the Gospels are basically stories that people were telling. I went down to the well one day, I was going to get some water, and I met the Christ. Those stories were told in small groups and upper rooms and people's homes for 30 years until they were finally put together in the Gospels, the form we call the Gospels. So my point is this. It is the presence of the living Christ that we bear witness to. Some of the most powerful sermons I have ever heard were not preached. As far as learning and discipleship and teaching... I think we're going to have to, for a little while, 
And I, and I love all that. Don't get me wrong. I've devoted my life to church and worship and Sunday school classes. But we don't have them right now. I'm not sure when they're going to be back. But I think quiet time is the new classroom. The Holy Spirit is our new teacher. Some of the greatest worship experiences I've ever had were not in a building. Some of the greatest lessons learned did not come from seminary or book, but came through the very real presence of the living Christ, resurrection power. As far as missions go, I want to just stop for a second and give thanks from the mission team um, for how you've been donating. We have put about twenty-eight thousand dollars out in the last since the break started into the helping, <coughs> excuse me, the Helping Hands Fund. Um, that's just one of them. The uh, So and Saints, the uh, Saintly Sisters, they're continuing to make masks for people. The next thing coming up is the Trinity Table, which we're going to put online if you'd like to participate in that. Natalie is going to continue that. We're just going to have to pack meals up here and take them down to Trinity Table. So we continue to serve the community in different ways. But I got to tell you, the best thing you can do right now, the best of my ability, is just to give money. You've seen the stories of people out of work, and out of income, imagine if you had no income. So folks are needing housing, folks are needing food. And our Helping Hands Fund goes to agencies that are on the front line with this. So I would encourage you to give that if you want to do something. Or if you've found something else, let me know. There's an old saying, when I know everything going on, there ain't enough going on. So please let me know anything we can do to continue our mission and our service to the community. And as far as gathering, yeah, I, I miss flesh and blood. I'm old. I'm old fashioned. The computer. I don't know how the toaster oven works. And now I got a Zoom and have an iPad and all you know all these things. I don't know. I'm having to learn. I hear my wife constantly on the phone talking to DSs and preachers saying, you know, we're in a time where you got to be innovative and find new ways to do the things we used to. Christ talked about new wineskins. So the church may be in a time where we have to reimagine and get new wineskins on how we get together in community. But I, I promise and I pray that soon we'll be back together. Maybe a little different. <laughs> My daughter's home now sewing masks together. We all have a mask. I don't know. I don't know. But I pray we will soon be back because I miss people. I miss community. I, I don't like talking to a video camera. I'd much rather look out and see Susan checking her watch. <laughs> things. I'd much rather look over here and see the Winters family um, and, and, and see how, read their reaction to what's going on. Are they listening? It's not, you know. I picked on Susan, but if you ever sit up here and watch how the joy as uh, she listens and receives the word, it, it changed your life. So I miss that. I, I miss people being here. This, we're just going to have to be open to the movement of the Spirit. You know, I don't know. I don't know, but I do know this. In this season of Easter, in this theme of resurrection power, the thing I hold on to is the old Easter hymn. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand. Sing it if you know it, but I know who holds tomorrow. And I know he holds my hand. Let us pray. The Spirit of the living Christ, 
whose life and death and resurrection gave us resurrection power and new life. I pray for your spirit, your presence, following everybody who hears this. Till they feel loved, till they feel your grace, till they feel your presence. Coach them, teach them, enable them to worship. Make their faith alive as you are living and breathing and walking. May your presence live in us and work through each of us through the power of the resurrected Christ. Amen. Receive now this benediction, Uh, go forth, and remember, he who holds tomorrow lives and breathes and holds your hand. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.